conversation about what you can expect to see from some of the best players in the world when they're trying to stack the odds in their favour relative to the shot shape that they want to see. So I've got Brooks Kepka and Dustin Johnson first and foremost as a brief conversation on hand path and their stock shape, a left to right movement of the golf ball that they like to see. Now a push fade, a pull fade, whatever you want to call it, this golf ball is moving from left to right. Now what you were tend to see from the world's better players is a generalized pattern now anything you're going to see in front of you now are based upon camera angles that don't match up i have no idea of their intention of what they're trying to hit i just go off what i've seen over years of analyzing their golf swings and seeing their ball flight on tv this is my opinion what i do see though is a general platform for better players day in day out that try and functionally hit fades is they have an idea of vertical hand path. Now, there's a lot of conversation out there right now about creating hand depth and hip depth in order to hit the golf ball from the in to out. But if you're trying to move the golf ball from left to right, there is a strong correlation between someone that doesn't quite create enough hand depth and hitting functional fades and patterns more reliably. So what you can see here is you've got Dustin and Brooks, and I'm going to take both players up to the top of the backswing. I have highlighted where their hands have started with the rails that you can see on the screen. If I take Brooks to the top of the backswing, and we just stop and highlight him at the top of the backswing, you can see just as he makes the transition, the butt end of the grip has probably moved around a centimetre more behind him. He has almost just picked up his hands from where they started. They've almost just elevated. They haven't really worked around him. Now, DJ sees a very similar item. He actually moves his hands further away from him in the takeaway in order to ensure that his hands don't create too much hand depth. Again, guess what? You're going to see very similar ideas of where the handle collates to at the top of the backswing. Very minimal ideas of hand depth. Well, think about it logically. If you're going to definitely try and move this golf ball from left to right, you don't necessarily want to create too much depth because that's going to increase, a more into, increase the probability of a more into-out golf swing. Now, what you do tend to see as a matchup with players that create little to no hand depth is you do tend to see a little bit more of an idea of a bowing action in the lead wrist. This is simply a management and a way to ensure that the golf club shallows more behind them and on the way down, because you could quite easily describe this hand path as steep. This is the matchup. The world of golf right now wants you to believe that the lead wrist is all about getting it flexed. Why does it need to be flexed when these matchups are trying to move the golf club in a shallow in action on the way down? Again, that is my opinion, and these camera angles are suggestive. But what you'll see is what goes up must come down, and a very simple movement. The hands now work back down to the slot. If anything, they're going to move slightly outside that plane on the way down. Again, let's understand what they're trying to achieve. The hands have worked a little more out in front of them. They are trying to hit a bit more of a fade bias move. At no point have their hands moved behind them, which would collate to a more draw bias swing. It doesn't really matter at what level you look at, and this was just taken a few days ago from the WGC, and this is John Rahm. John swings it incredibly different to the other guys, a little bit shorter. People want to say it's almost a standalone golf swing. To me, he exhibits very similar ideas. Hand path works almost straight up. Again, creates even less depth. His hands have just worked almost in a vertical movement they've just picked up but what's the matchup the matchup is he sees even more lead wrist flexion or a bow type manner to counteract his movement so the less hand depth you create the more maybe bowed wrist constructions you'd like to have in your game that would be up to you but they would be that would be a really good matchup again impact hands work slightly more out on the way down in order to hit that left to right bias movement. Okay, so now we've got some draw bias players, guys that like to start that golf ball a little bit further out to the right-hand side, and we've chucked Rory in there with the driver as well. Obviously, swing path direction will change the moment you put something on a tee peg. This is not a conversation about you need to do it more with a driver. Rory is just very, very well known for his ability to move that golf ball high right to left with the driver. And we're talking about patterns, nothing further on that, really. 
However, what you're going to see here is maybe a slightly different idea of hand depth. Now, let's just remind ourselves that hand depth was just behind this red line that's for the backswing for people that want to move in a fade biased move. We're talking about the movement of hands and how they create depth relative to the shape and structure you would like to create. If we take Rory to the top of the backswing, you're going to see a massive difference in shot shape that could possibly come from this position. We've created so much more hand depth at the top of the backswing in order to allow us to now tack the golf ball for more and into out perspective at impact. So we can now get a hand path to work a lot more through the body lines. Same is true with Bryson with his irons. You're going to see those hands work a lot more behind him and create a lot more hand depth. Again, we're talking about the idea of trying to get the hands behind the body as much as possible, which provides the player with a much larger opportunity to stack the odds in his favour and keep the hands and golf club behind him in a position of depth for a longer period of time. So you're going to see both players there at lead arm power on the way down, very, very close to seeing very similar ideas. The hands are still very much behind the columns that have started out. And you can see on the way down, their hands are behind them and the golf clubs even further than by, behind them. I see so often people trying to make changes and they don't stack the odds in their favour. Think about the shot shape you want to create and then just keep stacking the ideas in your favour. If you want to hit a draw, it might be a conversation of more hip depth and hand depth. If you want to hit a fade, it might be an idea of restricting these ideas to ensure that path comes out, but then you might need to match them up. Now remember, what goes up must come down. And therefore, what you see on the way down is just the result of what you try to achieve on the way back. Lead arm parallel, which I see so often when people put almost freeze frame stuff. They look at these two goals and go, well, if I'm doing an online lesson, this would be perceived as steep. And this might be perceived as a little bit more shallow in transition. To me, I see hand path differences and intention differences. So important when you do online lessons or in-person lessons as a golf coach to ask the integrity of the player, what shot shape are they trying to use throughout their career? How can we align their pattern to stack up the odds? And we can work from there. Hope that helps.